Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Marvel's Secret Invasion is teaching us that you cannot trust anything, including that the show's opening titles were designed by a human. The opening scene of the series reveals that Agent Everett Ross is a Skrull imposter. But for how long has this been the case? Was he abducted and replaced recently, or has he been a Skrull the whole time? The whole time? The, the whole time? You would the whole time? This question really gets to the heart of how we should question all MCU characters as we return to this Skrull search. And I have devised a helpful scroll checklist that we can run all Marvel faces through to determine just how scroll suspicious they are. Hey, New Rockstars is now three channels. This main channel for Easter egg breakdowns, the break room, which is the new home of our inside Marvel secret invasion after shows, and the deep dive for some special film analyses from me. Subscribe to all three and support us with a scroll inspired shirt at nerdriot.shop. Okay, to determine how long someone might have been a scroll, you really have to look at their full known MCU timeline. Everett Ross first appeared as a CIA agent detaining the Winter Soldier at the Joint Counter terrorist center in Berlin in Captain America Civil War. He returned in Black Panther, running into T'Challa in a casino in Seoul, and then joined them back in Wakanda. He returned in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, jogging in Virginia and helping the Wakandans commit espionage, betraying his ex-wife CIA director Val, and landing in federal custody where Okoye broke him free. So he has been on the run since then, a man without a country. Nick Fury and Maria Hill formerly occupied that fugitive status after Captain America the Winter Soldier, but came back into the fold after the events of Infinity War in Endgame. And now Nick Fury oversees Saber with the consent of the US president. So as of episode one of Secret Invasion, we do not know if Ross was taken by the Skrulls after Okoye freed him, or if he had been a Skrull long before that. This Ross in Secret Invasion episode one has all the knowledge and memories that this CIA agent would have knowing that Nick Fury was on Saber. So either Ross was a Skrull for a long time, or it was a recent switch and the Skrulls just took Ross's memories. One would think it would be hard for Skrulls to get their hands on Ross if he was with the Wakandans, but we also don't know if Ross stayed with Okoye, and we don't know that the Skrulls haven't also infiltrated Wakanda. Notice how when Ross calls Maria Hill for an extraction, his name shows up on her car's computer. So this Skrull version of Ross has been associating with Hill for quite some time. Like she probably knew he was meeting with Prescott. They had been working together here. We actually asked Secret Invasion director Ali Salim about whether these episodes would reveal how far back Martin Freeman's Everett Ross has been a Skrull in the MCU. Here was his answer. Is the Everett Ross in the opening episode, has he been a Skrull the whole time? Is there an Everett Ross cooling somewhere in a, in a freezer, uh, just hanging out, or is he on vacation? I think all will be revealed. If all will be revealed is how my uncle signs off all of his emails. Oh, really? A little ominous. Yeah, yeah, I might steal it. Typically for bigger name guest stars in these MCU Disney Plus shows, they appear in at least two episodes. Julia Louis-Dreyfus shot scenes for two different episodes of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Vincent D'Onofrio shot scenes for two episodes of Hawkeye, though his scenes with Young Echo were cut. I think we will see Martin Freeman again, and I would just be surprised if we found out that he'd been scroll from the very beginning. Why? Well, Everett Ross does fit the bill of what I'm calling our Skrull checklist. Someone who could have been a Skrull for some duration of time that we've known them in the MCU, but he does fall short of one. I think it'd be helpful to run through this whole checklist to look at all characters through. So Skrull suspects must be still alive. Like if we saw the character die and their corpse stayed human, they obviously weren't a scroll. So Tony Stark, Natasha Romanov, Aunt May, T'Challa, they must be visibly human. So like no androids like Vision or alien races of other kinds like the Guardians of the Galaxy. We already know Rocket's origin and we know Groot and Gamora are already weird aliens. So making them also scrolls would just be kind of a step down from the coolness that they already are. It'd be kind of a hat on a hat. There's a certain joy in building something, but let's be honest, I'm not gonna fire up my table saw and churn out a birdhouse anytime I'm soon. I'm not really the rustic type, but an infinity gauntlet. That's more my speed. Fan Home is a brand dedicated to developing unique collections and build up models from brands like Marvel and Star Wars. With a Fan Home subscription, not only will you get magazines about your favorite fandom, you'll also get all the pieces you need to build your very own replica Infinity Gauntlet. The Fan Home replica Infinity Gauntlet is officially licensed by Marvel. Every month, you'll get new parts to add to your model as well as an exclusive magazine detailing the secrets of the Infinity Saga. Each issue also comes with detailed, easy to follow assembly instructions, everything you need to build your gauntlet. The new Rockstars crew has been having fun assembling the gauntlet in the office. The full-size gauntlet stands at 28.7 inches tall and has LED light effects so that the Infinity Stones light up when you press them. If you subscribe to Fan Home before June 30th, you'll also get a 1-6 to six scale model of Iron Man's gauntlet to add to your collection. A Fan Home subscription is the perfect way to make your collection stand out. To get started, just click the link in the description below. Also, no bloody injuries. So when scrolls have a limb or a 
digit severed or they bleed out profusely from lacerations, that severed tissue in blood is supposed to revert to scroll tissue in human blood. So keep that one in mind. Also, no powers. Squirrels are naturally stronger than normal humans and they can replicate physical appearances and the memories of someone, but not yet superpowers because that would make them super scrolls. And this series is already hinting at a scroll plot to do that, which is a new initiative they're working on, not something that they've already had. So I don't think there would be past super scrolls existing in the MCU. So that would count out Hulk, Steve Rogers, Kamala Khan, Thor, Wanda Maximoff, etc. Also, they must be immune to radiation. This is established in episode one. Scrolls are not affected by harmful radiation. So if someone has ever been sunburnt or affected by the cosmic radiation of the Infinity Stones, they're not a scroll. So Monica Rambeau, she was affected by the CMBR of the Hex. So she is not a scroll. Also, the character must be known for deceit. I think for someone to be a scroll, they should have some kind of known history for dishonesty or ulterior motives. The honest and transparent types like Scott Lang, like Jimmy Woo, the loyal lieutenants like Okoye, they're probably not scrolls. And lastly, perhaps most importantly, they gotta be somewhat blank slates. And by this, I mean characters for whom revealing them as scrolls wouldn't controversially erase qualities that we already like about them or cheapen their journeys. Like the less we know about a character and the quirkier they generally are, the more likely Marvel will feel okay revealing them as a scroll. For example, it might be pretty odd for Marvel to establish Yelena Belova as being a scroll her entire life because we saw her childhood, we know about her adolescence in the Red Room having been brainwashed, and we saw when she transitioned through the blip, and for Yelena not to have briefly reverted to her scroll form in that private bathroom would have just been kind of weird. So with this checklist in mind, here are the top eight candidates for past known MCU characters likely to be confirmed as scrolls in this series. Everett Ross. He checks all the boxes, but he was seriously incapacitated during the Black Panther film. So I think back then at least he was human, but that sometime after his escape during Wakanda Forever, he was captured and he was turned. Because yes, other than that, he does check all the boxes. Okay, next, his ex-wife, Val. I am 99% sure that Val is a scroll. She checks all the boxes. She has a purple streak in her hair. She's shady as hell. She might be the highest profile US government official who is a scroll. And Samuel L. Jackson said that Julie Louis-Dreyfus sat behind him at the Oscars, poking him and saying, we're gonna fight, we're gonna fight. I could drop you like a bag of dirt. Next, Sharon Carter. She's also a solid scroll candidate. She's another government spy. She popped out of nowhere. She took some shady turns with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier that we're all still asking questions about. The problem with Sharon is she uses a Black Widow style face cloaking mask in that show's finale. Why would she need that if she could shapeshift? Okay, next option, Laura Barton, another MCU spy with more questions than answers about her backstory. She was recently revealed as Mockingbird, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. in Hawkeye. That would pose some questions about their kids though. Now, Rhodey is the likeliest Skrull Avenger. The only issue with Rhodey is he took a nasty fall in Civil War and I think that would have outed himself before. Also, it would suck to learn the Rhodey who fought alongside the Avengers in Infinity War and Endgame was a Skrull, but we still have a lot more to learn about Rhodey's relationship with the Skrulls in episode two, three, three, four, five, and six of this series. Let's talk about Happy Hogan. I've always made a case for this guy, just because Jon Favreau always seems game to help a Disney Plus title. He's someone in the Tony Stark orbit who's been there since 2008. I don't think it would hurt us that much to find out that he was a scroll, but he was also incapacitated after that bombing in Iron Man 3. I also don't think a scroll would expose themselves to so much legal trouble in Spider-Man No Way Home. But someone else from Tony Stark's orbit from that very first movie, William Ginter Riva. Kind of a nobody, but remember, this guy was part of Team Mysterio in Spider-Man Far From Home. I actually just discussed this with Tim Geddes in the class I just did on Kind of Funny, but Team Mysterio created the fake news frenzy that Agent Prescott referred to this episode that the Skrulls are now directly benefiting from. He was a Stark Industries employee and he turned into an illusion technician who released Mysterio's doctored video to the press. I think there's a chance that one member of Team Mysterio was a Skrull, and if so, He's at the top of it. But one final candidate. I thought it was interesting how this episode established that scrolls take humans' faces and their minds, including their memories. That would mean that someone who's an expert at some learned behavior over the course of their lives would be a victim to those skill sets being hijacked. And technically, practitioners of the mystic arts in the MCU fall in that category. Benjamin Bratt's character and Doctor Strange in the first movie prove that anybody can learn it. So I propose to you that the possibility that Wong is a scroll. He's the most frequent cameo maker in Marvel Phase 4. He's someone who brings comedic relief and I don't think it would take anything away from him being Sorcerer Supreme. He's already a weirdo and we already have extraterrestrial sorcerers in the MCU. So let me know your thoughts about this scroll search. And we'll check back in throughout the series. Subscribe to all three of our channels, New Rockstars, The Break Room, and The Deep Dive and support us by grabbing some merch at nerdriot.shop. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVoss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching, bye.